This is a review of hairy cell leukemia, or HCL. The learning objectives of this talk are to understand the epidemiology, presenting symptoms, and diagnostic features of hairy cell leukemia. Learners should also be able to describe the basic treatment options in hairy cell leukemia and the recent developments in understanding the pathobiology of the disease. The outline of this talk reflects the learning objectives and will begin with historical points and the epidemiology of the disease. We will then move on to the presenting symptoms in laboratories at diagnosis, the diagnostic features of the disease, and the basics of treatment options. We will conclude with discussing important scientific discoveries in the disease. Ewald coined the term leukemic reticular endotheliosis to describe a case of leukemia, which appeared to be circulating malignant monocytes and other cells that he called the reticular endothelial system. Ewald was actually discussing a case of acute myelogenous leukemia, but when Baronkel reviewed a case series of 26 patients from her institution and noted a distinct leukemic entity, the term leukemic reticular endotheliosis became the name used for the disease now commonly known as hairy cell leukemia. Photos from their case series appear to the right. The name hairy cell leukemia was not first used until 1966 by Schreck and Donnelly when they referred to circulating cells as hairy and flagellated cells of the lymph nodes which appear in the figures at the bottom of the screen. The epidemiology of hairy cell leukemia as discussed here is an uncommon B-cell lymphoproliferative disorder representing only 2% of all leukemias. In the United States, this translates to 400 to 600 cases a year. There's a strong male-to-female uh, predominance with a male-to-female ratio of 3.9 to 1 cases. This is also displayed at the figure in the bottom center. The median age of diagnosis is 58 years. The bottom right figure displays some of the morphology of the circulating hairy cells, noting the strong and thin cytoplasmic projections. The clinical features at presentation for hairy cell leukemia patients in general can be divided into the rule of quarters. One quarter of patients will present with nonspecific weakness, fatigue, and weight loss. Another quarter will present with abdominal fullness symptoms due to hepato or splenomegaly. Another quarter will present with sequela of their cytopenias. It is important to note that 60 to 80 percent of all hairy cell leukemia patients will present with cytopenias. Finally, a quarter of patients are asymptomatic at the time they are brought to medical attention. Usually, in these cases, the disease is found by routine imaging or routine laboratories by their primary care physician. Hair cell leukemia patients usually do not have night sweats, enlarged lymph nodes, or other constitutional symptoms. The diagnosis of hairy cell leukemia can be made in several ways. 90% of patients will have circulating hairy cells, though only 20% of the circulating cells will have this hairy appearance. The typical hairy cells are mononuclear, small to medium-sized lymphocytes. The nucleus is usually eccentric, and the nucleoli are difficult to see. The fluffy cytoplasm with serrated border and projections is the morphological feature giving hairy cell leukemia its name. The images at the bottom of the screen represent different aspects of the morphology. Left to right, these images are taken by light microscopy, in the center by phase contrast microscopy, and finally at the right by electron microscopy. The diagnosis on um, bone marrow aspiration is helpful both for establishing the diagnosis, especially when the peripheral blood counts are low, as well as giving important pretreatment information. All patients with hairy cell leukemia should have bone marrow biopsy before starting treatment. Patients who have a hypocellular marrow, and 10% of all hairy cell leukemia patients will present this way, and this is shown in the top right image, or fibrosis, which is shown in the bottom right image, or a high burden of disease seen by CD20 staining in the bottom center portion of the screen, can have prolonged cytopenias after chemotherapy treatment for hairy cell leukemia, and therefore knowing this information at the start of treatment can be helpful in dose-adjusting the medication. TRAP, or tartrate-resistant acephosphatase, is an established immunohistochemical stain for the detection of hairy cell leukemia. The name derives from studies which found different isoenzymes of acid phosphatase varied in levels in different leukocytes, with the isoenzyme number 5 only expressed in hairy cell leukemia. 
The image to the right shows gel electrophoresis with bands representing the different isoenzymes and paired samples, which are labeled at the bottom of the figure, showing the isoenzymes expressed in different leukemias, as well as in normal leukocytes. The row with the arrow are the paired sample with the tartrate added. A box highlights the process in hairy cell leukemia, where isoenzyme number 5 is bright and not inhibited by tartrate. Below, at the bottom of the screen, are examples of trap staining for hairy cell leukemia. Flow cytometry uses labeled antibodies to cellular surface markers and can characterize the cell population by what markers individual cells expressed. This process can be performed on peripheral blood samples as well as the bone marrow biopsy aspirate sample. The figure to the right of the slide represents different flow plots with the X and Y axis representing different cellular markers as they are labeled. The hairy cell, leukemia cells, is characterized as expressing CD11C, CD25, CD103, and CD123, as well as being bright for the PAMB cell markers CD19, CD20, and CD22. The red population are normal B cells. You can see by this comparison that the expression patterns of the different surface markers are not absolute. However, flow cytometry has become very helpful in the diagnosis and differential diagnosis of hairy cell leukemia. Prior to 1983, the only treatment employed for hairy cell leukemia was splenectomy. Though this gave some response in blood counts, it did not meaningfully impact survival, as seen in the Kaplan-Meier curve on the right of the screen. In 1983, the first trial was published using interferon alpha, given as an injection, in a case of seven patients. Three patients responded in this trial, but follow-up studies showed only 10 to 15 patients responded, and the side effects of the medication were difficult to tolerate. The purine nucleoside analogs were developed in the early 1980s after observations that children with adenosine deaminase or ADA deficiency had severe combined immunodeficiency-like syndrome with absence of lymphocytes. ADA breaks down adenosine and deoxyadenosine, and without this function, the products are converted into products that are toxic to the cell. Penistatin is a direct inhibitor of ADA, and cladribine is not an ADA inhibitor, but is resistant to ADA and similarly results in buildup of products which lead to lymphocyte deaths. Cladribine also directly is toxic to the mitochondria and other part of the cell. The most commonly used treatments for hair cell leukemia today are these purine nucleoside analogs. Cladribine is given as a single continuous infusion for five or seven days, while pentastatin is given every two weeks until patients respond. The responses, shown as complete responses in the figure above, abbreviated CR, as well as the relapse rate, which are highlighted in the red box, are similar between the drugs. In general, these drugs are considered equivalent. The key point is that since no available treatment is curative, and since no treatment strategy changes overall patient survival, patients aren't treated until they are symptomatic or have an established downward trend in their blood counts. The pathobiology of hairy cell leukemia is becoming better understood. In 2011, TSEL published in the New England Journal of Medicine the identification of the BRAF-V600E mutation in all 48 hairy cell leukemia patients included in their study. All of the 195 patients with other B-cell lymphoproliferative disorders which were studied did not have this mutation. A second study by Boyd et al. confirmed these findings, with 48 cases of hairy cell leukemia having the mutation and 114 patients with other lymphoproliferative disorders not having the mutation. Interestingly, this mutation is established in other tumors such as melanoma and gives insight into the possible pathobiology of hairy cell leukemia as well as targets for possible future developments in treatment. In summary, hairy cell leukemia is an uncommon chronic B-cell lymphoproliferative disorder. Most patients are cytopenic at the time of their diagnosis. Diagnosis can be made on several fronts, including morphological features, immunohistochemical staining such as TRAP, and flow cytometry. Hairy cell leukemia cells express CD11C, CD25, CD103, CD123, and bright CD20. Complete responses in hairy cell leukemia patients after treatment with nucleoside purine analogs such as penistatin and cladribine can be seen in 70-90% of patients. However, these patients are not cured and up to half of them will relapse at 15 years. Therefore, patients are only treated for hairy cell leukemia if they become symptomatic from the disease.
Finally, the BRAF-V600E mutation has been found in all cases of hairy cell leukemia study in two different independent cohorts. This gives insight into the pathobiology of the disease and possible future treatments. Acknowledgements are listed here, including Dr. Mark Lanesa, Dr. Bryce Weinberg and the Weinberg Lab, Sally Allgood, Dr. Carlos DeCastro, and the Duke Fellowship Program, and finally, our patients.